Colbert's law states the relationship between how fast a cricket chirps and the temperature. It is T equals 50 plus the difference of N and 40 divided by 4. If N equals 86, find T. And then going the other way, if T is 55, find N. So I'm going to do this one first. I have N is given to me, it's 86, so I have to replace the N there with the 86. So I have T equals 50 plus 86 minus 40 all over 4. Order of operations. I have this giant fraction bar here. So because I have that giant fraction bar, that means I have an understood set of parentheses at the edge of it. So I need to do that first. 86 minus 40. That gives me 46. Carry the rest of the problem down. Now I have to figure out what 46 divided by 4 is. Type it on your calculator. 11.5. Carry the rest of the problem down. And then add these two numbers together. So it's just follow your order of operations. And then because this is a word problem, we need to put units on our answer. So thinking about what we're talking about here. It's the relationship between how fast a cricket chirps and the temperature. So T often stands for temperature. Sometimes it's for time, but this time it's temperature. And N could be for the number of times the cricket chirps. So since we have T down here, I'm going to put my degrees Fahrenheit. Now I have my answer. Part B. They're asking us to replace T with 55. So we have 55 equals 50 plus that fraction there, n minus 40 over 4. So over on that side, I followed my order of operations PEMDAS, parentheses, exponents, multiply, divide, add, subtract. Over here though, because I have all of the other numbers on the same side as my letter, Now we do part B. Part B is telling us that T is 55 and we need to find N. So I'm going back up to my equation up here. Instead of writing T, I write 55 equals 50 plus, and then I have that giant fraction, N minus 40 so all over 4. Over on this side, we were given the number, given the uh, value of the number that had all of the other numbers on the same side of the equal sign with it. So I followed my order of operations forwards. PEMDAS, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, parentheses first, exponents, there weren't any, multiply, divide, then add, subtract. Over on this side, though, my letter that I'm trying to solve for has all of the other numbers with it. 
So now I have to go backwards with my order of operations. So I go to my add subtract first. Remember, you have that understood parentheses on the top of the fraction there. So I'm looking at that plus sign. So I need to get rid of that 50 first. It's an understood positive number, so I'm going to subtract it. 55 minus 50 is 5, and that equals this giant fraction, n minus 40 all over 4. I still have my understood parentheses. So now I have my add subtract is done. I go to my multiply divide. Still going backwards. So I have to get rid of that divide by 4 there. You get rid of something that's divided by multiplying it. So 5 times 4 is 20. The divide by 4 and the times 4 cancel each other out and I have equals n minus 40. Last thing to get rid of, add the 40 over here. What I do on one side of the equal sign, I do on the other. 20 plus 40 is 60, equals the plus 40 minus 40 cancels out, and I have just n. I'm not quite done yet. I still need my units on here. So I go back through my word problem, and I didn't write it down up here, but my units are chirps per minute. So if you're outside and it's cold and you want to count the chirps because you want to know how cold it is, and you count 60 chirps, that's 55. If you count 86 chirps, then it's 61 and a half. 